Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's take a moment to see how easy it is to rename our photos in Lightroom Classic. To rename a single image, we can select the image and then use the metadata panel in order to select the file name and then type in the new file name. Now it's important to note that when you rename a file in Lightroom Classic, either a single image or when we batch rename images like we'll do in a moment, Lightroom Classic renames the photo in the operating system as well. I'll choose Photo, Show in Finder, and we can see that the file has been renamed. Now let's create and save a file naming template so that we can batch rename our photos. I'll choose Library, and then Rename Photo. Now there are a number of preset templates that ship with Lightroom Classic, but let's see how to create our own. I'll choose Edit, and then delete everything in this renaming area. Now we can enter type directly into the field, or we can use the tokens to instruct Lightroom Classic to insert information into the file name using the metadata information that is contained within the photo. I'll start by adding my name and then add an underscore. Then I wanna select a token to insert the date into my file name. In my case, I'm fine with just inserting the year, but there are a lot of different options to choose from. Then I'll choose to insert the token. We can see a preview of the rename file as we make our changes. Now, since the token will fill in the date from the camera's EXIF data, you'll wanna make sure that the date on the camera is correct. Then I'll add another underscore to make it easy to read, and then add another token for the original number suffix. This will keep the original numeric sequence in the original file name, but it'll remove any of the unneeded characters that might also be included in the default file name. To save the settings as a template, I'll choose Save Current Settings as New Preset, and I'll give the preset a name, and then create the preset. All right, let's explore another example. I'm going to delete the information here, and then I'll insert the custom text token. So this token will enable us to enter different text every time we use the template. And it can be really useful if you want to include, say, the name of your client or perhaps a location in the file name. Then I'll add another underscore and then a sequence number. Where the example shows untitled, that's where the custom text would appear. So files renamed using this template, if I was using the client name, might read smith underscore 001, smith underscore 002, smith underscore 003, and then for the next client, it might be jones underscore 001, and then jones underscore 002, and so on. All right, let's choose save current settings as new preset, and we'll give the preset a name, and then create the preset. Now that we've created the templates, let's click cancel because we only have one image selected. Then I'll select all of my images and return to library, rename photo. I'll select the file naming template that I prefer and then rename my files. Now we've renamed these files in the library module, but you can also rename files on import. I'll click import and then if I select copy as DNG, copy or move in the import window, we can see there's a file renaming option. We can go ahead and select our template from the drop-down menu. If we choose the add option, then we can't rename on import, but we can always rename our files later. Okay, I'll choose done because we're not going to import any files. It can also be helpful to create a file name template for when we want to export files or hand off images to Photoshop. Let's return to library and then rename photos. In this example, I want to create a template for when I need to export files as low resolution JPEGs for my clients. I'll delete the information and I would suggest that you keep the file base name the same. That way the files that your client's looking at have the same base name as yours. Then try appending the file name with something that reveals its significance. You can either type this into the window or add a custom text token. If you always hand off files at the same size, say 2000 pixels, then you can enter that. But if it's going to change for each client, then I would use the token. All right, let's go ahead and save our current settings as a new preset. 
and we'll give it a name and then create the preset. I have another template that I use when I am finished with Lightroom and I want to continue editing my images in Photoshop. Keep the file name and then add in underscore ME for master edited. That way I immediately know that this is my master edited and probably multi-layered Photoshop document. All right, let's go ahead and save the current settings as a new preset. I'll name it and create the preset. When we choose export, we can use our template to rename our files. This is where we would also choose the file format and the dimensions of the file. I'll cancel that and let's look at where we would change the default renaming when editing in Photoshop. I'll choose preferences, external editing, and then we can choose our template. All right, before we wrap up, I just want to point out one more thing, and that is that Lightroom Classic does save the original file name, if you ever needed it, in the metadata panel. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.